This morning, the archbishops or the bishops of England were claiming this is immoral and it sends the worst possible signal about Britain abroad. Yes, well, they've been saying that ever since the uh, policy was announced. If you remember, the Archbishop of Canterbury uh, decided that it was, and I quote, ungodly uh, when it was very first announced. Um, but the fact is that the bishops can't come up with any uh, optional policy that will stop the, the deaths in the channel, that will stop the people trafficking and stop the unlawful trade in human beings. Uh, they're not coming up with any uh, options. This, I believe, will work. Now, there's only going to be a handful of people, if that, going today. That doesn't matter. Once it becomes regular, and once the numbers of those uh, being sent to Rwanda grow, then the deterrent effect will be felt. And that is what this is about. It's about deterrence. At the moment, there's no deterrence because nobody's actually gone back. Now, the instant you send even half a dozen back, you're sending out a different message. They've got no alternative. I, I, I mean, they, they, they do in the sense that they say actually just o offer up safe routes. Yes, it might mean more asylum seekers coming to seek asylum here in Britain. The numbers may well, of course, go up. But frankly, if you offered safe passage, it would stop the criminal gangs and it would stop people crossing the channel because they could get into the UK uh, safely. It, this is all about numbers, well, frankly, think... isn't it, Anne? It, it, this is all about the fact that people aren't comfortable with lots of asylum, lots of people seeking asylum in the UK. Well, first of all, uh, let's look at the, the safe passage route. Supposing you're uh, a, a, an Afghan interpreter, the Taliban going to let you seek a safe passage? You've got to get out of the country first. That's because you would be genuinely desperate. You would be a genuine asylum seeker, not an economic migrant. Now, the fact is that the people coming across the channel, by definition, are coming from France, where they've often been for months on end perfectly safe country under the rule of law, signed up to every last refugee convention that we are also signed up to. So there is no good reason why those migrants should not have sought asylum in France. But of course, the reason that they don't do that is because most of their cases are extremely flimsy, unlikely to be accepted by France, which has got quite a, a, a tough view. Uh, and therefore, they try to get unlawfully into Britain because we've sent out a message. And that message is, if you get into Britain, uh, you're very, very unlikely ever to be removed. Why? No national identity cards, flourishing underground economy, all too easy to disappear. Fascinating, actually, that m lots of people say one of the ways you could deal with all of this and one of the reasons that migrants do want to leave places like France is through a national ID card system. I mean, do you think we should we should look at that again? Because it, it would it would prevent people from able to to seek work in in the kind of underground uh, jobs market or the, the dark economy. Yeah, I've been in favour of national identity cards right from the start. And the interesting thing is that every single home secretary. Uh, even if he or she began off opposed to national identity cards, uh, in the end has seen the merit of them uh, because they do make a lot of things easier. And one of the things they make easier is immigration uh, control. I've never bought into the civil liberties argument uh, because I have a passport, I have a driving license, I have work ID, I have this, I have that. Uh, and so the idea that a national identity card somehow infringes my civil liberties, I think is farcical. Very finally, Anne, you know, on this point about kind of global Britain, it's going to be one of the kind of big things about Brexit, isn't it? Do you think this harms our reputation abroad, irrespective of the rights and wrongs of it, that it sends out a message that actually Britain isn't necessarily terribly welcoming or terribly compassionate? Is that a potential negative byproduct of this policy? I don't think so, though I understand why you asked the question. Um, I don't think so for the very simple reason that this is a last resort taken in order to save lives. So I don't think that that is actually going to be the message that goes out. Um, and indeed, to a certain extent, that's up to the government and how it puts this policy across. And Whitcomb, as always, with the best bookshelf in Britain down there in Kent. Uh, thank you very much, as always, for joining us. Thank you, Anne.